Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so I, I want to be stronger. Amen. In the things of God. And I realize that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But I realize also that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I have to apply the truth. And it didn't say it came by having heard the word. It says came by hearing the word which is a present tense continual. I mean, you know, it's something that has to continue to happen in my life that my faith can be increased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm grateful for that. And I know that God hasn't quit on me and God hasn't given up on me because my faith is increasing. I'm able to make choices that I may not have been able to make in 2019. I'm able to do things. Amen. And a lot of the choices wasn't even available. But now God knows he can trust you with it. He can trust me with it in 2020. Because it's time for clear vision. Amen. So he's not just God with me. I mean, no, he's God in me. And it makes a big difference. Amen. Therefore, if any man be in, he is. A new creature. Old things pass away. And behold, open your eyes to see all things become new in your life. I don't care what nobody said about you then. I don't care what happened back then. I don't care if that was then, this is now. I did it, but I'm not it. <laughs> Amen. That's what was. This is what is. And God is good. Y'all going to make me get happy up in here. <laughs> Clear vision in 2020. How many know it won't be accessed apart from the power of God operating in your life? So you got to understand Philippians 4.13 says, I can do I can do, I can do, how many? I can do all things through Christ. Not through me, but through Christ that strengthened me. Huh? So it lets me know all things are possible to him that believe. And I can do all things through him, but it's not through me. And so therefore, I can do everything, I can do all things through him, but I can't do anything apart from him. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? So I need, everybody say I need. I need. Say it again, I need. I need. Yeah, you got to know you need, not want, just want Jesus in your life. You got, we need Christ in our life. How many hearing what I'm saying? So it comes down. And, 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 and if you listen to any of my message, I don't have but one. My message is, you can make it. Look at your neighbor and say, you can make it. Come on, say it like you mean it. You can make it. See, you got to know you can make it, baby. I don't care what happened in the past. I, I don't care who did what to you. I don't care what you did. I don't care where you did it. I don't care when you did it. I don't care how you did it. I don't care how many people did it to you. You can make it, baby. Don't you tap out. Don't you cave in. Don't you quit. You can make it. You can make it. Don't you give up on yourself. Don't you give up on them kids. Don't you give up on your... Don't you give up. The key is that we transform. We have to transform. Can't transform apart from the word. The word is the seed. The seed comes in. The seed is what transforms you. Because the seed is what renews your mind. The word of God renews our mind. How many know we need our mind renewed? Oh, well, maybe it's just me. But I need my mind renewed. See, and, and I'm not talking past tense. I need my mind renewed today. I need my mind renewed tomorrow. I need my, my mind renewed next week. Hey, Amen. I still got some stuff I need to get out of my mind. I still got some thinking I need to overcome. 
I don't care what nobody, put whatever title you want on me. I still got to get up and fight every day just like you do, baby. I'm a fighter, but I'm a winner. Because I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to tap out. I'm not going to quit. Amen. Paul says, I beseech you. Amen. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. God's mercy. They knew every day. Amen. We have to understand how important it is that we transform. Like I say all the time, right words, right thoughts, right attitudes, right behavior. Wrong words, wrong thoughts, wrong attitudes, wrong behavior. I have to make a word exchange. You have to make a word exchange. Don't allow those old, those old pathetic, uh, 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 de dehumanizing words that's been spoke over you in the past dictate your actions today. You a new creature. You a new creature. All the most shame-based attitudes and words and things that's been spoken over us that think they're going to hold us and prevent us from becoming who God says we are. But the devil is a lie. I said the devil is a lie. I'm transforming by the renewing of my mind. Romans 12, 2, you got to know that word. Then it goes on saying, and be not conformed. Stop getting tripped up by the world and all the things that the world is promoting and all the things the world is trying to dictate we have to become. Stop allowing the world to tell us who we are. We ought to tell the world who we are. Care what nobody has to say. Amen. So y'all know me. I looked up the word vision in the Webster and it talks about the faculty or the state of being able to see. Gave different synonyms. But then number one there said the ability to think about a plan, uh, to think about our plan in the future with imagination or wisdom, which is, is kind of what we think in terms of. But then it goes on and says an experience of seeing someone or something in a dream or a trance or as a supernatural apparition. Then the third one says a person or sight of usual beauty. But then I just looked at Strong's and Strong didn't go into real detail, but it talked about sight. And it talked about vision. And then it talked about uh, the act of gazing. Then externally it talks about an aspect or an internally an inspired appearance or sight or vision. But it's a, even a little more. And we're going to get into it as we study and go into it. Because without the vision, how many know we do have a tendency to perish? Yeah. Amen. In different areas. And what I'm saying is, see, uh, at different times, I don't know whether you experience it or not. But at, at, in, at different times, uh, things are clear. And, and you're excited about it and you have a passion toward it or whatever. But then it, there can be another time in your life when some of those things diminish. You don't have the same passion for it, same desire. Amen. And so we have to understand that it's beginning to perish. How many know when you go into the fruit section, it talks about perishable. Amen. It's deteriorating, whether it looks good or not. How many know so you don't see it instantly? See, you don't see your attitude perishing instantly. Right. How many know it takes time for the attitude to change? But nonetheless, as it diminishes, it's perishing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your walk with God may not be as strong today as it was when you got saved. Yeah. It, ought to be the, it ought to be inverted, but it might not be because certain things happen to you. Huh? You got some church hurt. Now, it, 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 it's not as exciting to you because all them pastors that way. Well. Right, say it, Bishop. All right. You done throwed everybody in the lump. Amen. You don't understand there's individuals. Amen. And, and God deals with us on them basis. So now things are perishing. You know, the things you used to be excited about don't excite you like they used to any longer. Yeah. The songs that used to excite you don't ignite you no more. Right. You can sit down now. You used to be up and, 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 and doing what bro Brother Rudolph used to do. Yeah. You used to be up and dancing and, woo, Jesus. Right. But now, you chilling. Right. Huh? Something perishing. 
something perishing. Something is, is happening that ought not be happening. Where did your excitement go? Where did your passion go? Huh? Where, where did your desire to worship God, to, to honor him? Because it ain't about the people and it ain't about what happened to you. It's all about your relationship with him because it don't matter what the people did. It don't matter how you got hurt. How your relationship. It should never get worse. It should always get better. My relationship with my wife is getting gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder. <laughs> it's not perishing. It's not perishing. It's not deteriorating. Anybody hear me? How can you, after 10, 20, 25, 30 years, your relationship with God wane? I'm so excited today about having given my life to Jesus May 14, 1986. I thought I was excited back then, but I come in here now hopping. <laughs> better ask somebody shoot today alright y'all gonna mess me up y'all gonna mess me up <laughs> you ought to be more excited than you ever been you ought to be saying glory to God more than you ever said you ought to be saying hallelujah more than you ever said you ought to be saying thank you Jesus more than you ever said you ought to be saying, if it had not been for the Lord, more than you have, it's not going to work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I have to challenge myself to take the old man off. See, many of us, or some of us, nobody in here, but I'm talking down the street at the other churches, they still kind of like the old man. So they hold on to him, huh? And they, 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 they want to they, they, they piece him out. They get pieces. They won't just take it off. They want to give up pieces. I mean, you know, they don't want God to have the whole thing. They, they just want to give up peace. I'll crucify some of it. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm just going, I'm just going to go with, with the study. As we draw nigh to God, I mean, you know, we began to manifest his nature and his mind. Folks will notice a change because your nature changes. Your mind changes. You ain't contentious like you used to be. You're not argumentative like you used to be. You're not selfish like you used to be. You're not greedy like you used to be. It ain't all about you like it used to be. Huh? We say in 2020. See, we're getting clear vision now. Uh-huh, we putting off that old man. Amen. And we drawing nigh to God. We, we, we manifesting his nature. Amen. We're manifesting his mind and not our own. Amen. Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you. See, it lets you know you don't have to. But when Christ came in, how I many know he brought his mind with him? He didn't leave his mind outside. He brought it with him. But the problem is, are you letting it operate? It's there. But the old man, the old mind is there also. And, and too often, we're going back to default. Default is in the old, old man. How many know we're going back to default? And we're reacting and, and rather than responding with the mind of God, we're reacting with the old man mind. Are we understanding? Amen. 
And as I shared on the West Campus, we have become common and we have a, a, a common uh, a, a nature. We have, a, we have a, a normalcy about our foolery. Yeah, it's normal. You know, that's just the way we are. Our whole family do that. That don't make it right just because your whole family do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's just common. It don't make it right just because it's normal. It's just normal foolery. It's in the dictionary too, in the urban dictionary. <laughs> so you're yet operating according to your default system and you haven't totally eradicated it. So there's, there's all kinds of contradictions coming up. And you're wrestling with stuff you shouldn't have to wrestle with after all this time. Because if you, if you allow your, your, your relationship with God and your commitment to him to stay intact, I don't care what nobody does. How many realize it's not going to deteriorate? It's not going to perish. Amen. I done been in a position where all kind of stuff happened. And because I knew who my God was and my commitment to him, it didn't matter. I'm still gonna walk it out. I'm still gonna do what God called me to do. I'm still gonna stand where God called me to stand. Ain't got nothing to do with people and places and things. <laughs> I know what God has called me to do and what God has called me to be and who God called me to be and, and I'm not about to, to negate my assignment based on what somebody else's action is. I'm not going to allow your action to be called my sin by me allowing condemnation to fall on me or guilt or, 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 or allowing your actions to dictate my behaviors that are contrary to God's truth for my life. It's not going to dictate my behavior based on what you did to me. And I know that my life is lined up with what God has purpose and plan. And, 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 and if I go with what you have done and react to what you did, then I'm going to get out of pocket with what God has assigned me to. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Ain't going to happen to me. Not going to happen. So we're looking at it because of fallible flesh no matter how well intended we are or how well intended we are how many know we can still miss it yeah. i say we can miss it yeah. joseph and mary missed it we talked about it before because of their distractions and when they were distracted and they left jesus behind they stepped into a new season a new dimension of life for themselves as i said and i hope and the Bible shows us that it never happened again. So it was a never again moment. 2019 should have brought you some never again moments. There should be some things that you promised yourself stepping into 2020. I'll never do that again. Yeah. The one thing about it for me is that when I make those declarations, I always put from now on, on the tail end of it. See, it was something I learned when I was at a conference with Ivy Hillier, how he was talking about he'd be, he'd be counseling married couples and he, and he was let them know that you need to make you a list of your never agains. Because all of us got some. It should be some stuff that didn't happen. I don't care. I don't care how good marriage you is. It's some stuff that happened in your marriage that you should never do again. But the key is because of your default system, if you don't put a foot now on in there, you'll go back to your never again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I, I, I got to know that, that life always brings some never agains to it. It's always on the table. It's, it's some things that happen. That's just life. I told you. See, you don't never want your heartbeat or your, 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 the, 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 the gauge that they use to gauge your heart to be straight. Yeah. How many know you always want 
some peaks. Oh, come on, y'all. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? See, 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 I won't mind to go like this. <laughs> Amen. That's life. That's, life. That's proof of life. Yeah. Huh? See, if it does that, babe, how I many you know they're going to have to hit you? <laughs> Are you hear what I'm saying? They're going to have to hit you. Now you're flat line. I don't want no flat line. Huh? I don't want no flat line. Amen. I need mine to go up and down. Amen. That's life. Amen. So now, whether we embrace it or not, as we stepped into 2020, either our vision became more clear or it became more blurred. See, if you, you, some of us stepped in with more worries, more stress, more pressure, even depression. Stepped into 2020 from 2019. And it's just blurring your vision more and more because you, you're feeling now like, you know, I, I can't get over it. You know, I can't defeat this thing. I'm here to tell you the devil is a lie. You can beat it. And you can beat it in 2020. You can beat it in 2020. Yes, you can. Uh-huh. See, you got to understand. He already borne your grief. Carried your sorrow. Huh? You got to understand that. Huh? Bruised. Chastised. All of it. Amen. Wounded for your transgression. Bruised for your iniquity. How I many you know the Bible says the chastisement of our peace was upon him? But by his stripes. I said by his stripes. <laughs> you can be healed. Amen. So Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, he says, we should all speak the same thing. There should be no division. We ought to be perfectly joined together and have the same mind, same judgment. So Paul's goal, we got to realize this, is for fellowship of the body, the oneness of spirit in the midst of differences. You got to understand there's going to be differences. Amen. But we can still have oneness of spirit. Amen. And that's what the, 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 the objective is. We realize that the, the church at Corinth is reflected of a new group of congregants. We understand they talk about if you study it out, you see what it's spoken of uh, not being more than six years old. So you got a group of people there that Paul won to the Lord. You got uh, other people there also that's been won to the Lord and everything. But these are newer Christians. And, and, but but they haven't divisions and, and strife and contention. They haven't all kind of things going on. But the thing about it is Paul knows what's necessary. He, he said, I'm, great, I'm grateful for your gifts. I'm grateful for all the talents and things that you might have. But what you don't have is the unity. So you got to have, I mean, you know, see, you got to understand when you look at, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you got to understand that where there's unity, how I many you know the Bible says that God commands his blessing. He didn't say he just sent them. It said he commands his blessings. So God makes it absolutely assured that if you have in unity, you have in harmony, how I many you know they were all in one place on one accord, then suddenly <laughs> the Holy Ghost fell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You invite the Holy Ghost in when you're on one accord, when you're in unity, when you're in harmony. How I many know you invite the Holy Ghost in? Amen. In the midst of everything. Anyway, so we understand that, 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 that Paul is teaching them to embrace the new and release the old. Amen. He, he founded the church. We know he's in relationship with the church. And so therefore, we realize now that, 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 that he can speak to them and he spoke to them somewhat different than he did to some of the other churches. Yeah. Amen. And you look all the way down through there and you look at the, and from that chapter to about the sixth chapter, you see how Paul's bringing correction to the, to the body. Amen. But I mean, realize that it's still practical for us today. It's not just historical, it's, it's contemporary. And that's what we have to understand. So his, his letter addressed uh, much that was local and temporary, but we find underlining principles that serve, that, that, that serve problems that we face today. How I many you know the same principles that he used, they serve for us today with the same type problems that they had even thousands of years ago? I mean, nothing new under the sun. You got to get that down in your spirit. The main problem in the church 
At that time, I know it ain't in the church now, but the main problem was sin. Hmm? Uh-huh. Not just the sinner sinning. It was Christian sinning. Huh? And that was the main problem. But we have to understand, we have to repent, confess the sin. And I mean, no, God said he cleanses us when we do. You know, and I, like I said, that was then. I, I know it don't happen now, but, but it was 1 John 1 and 9 was written for a reason. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us. I mean, no, that was written to Christian. Huh? Amen. We confess our faults. I mean, that's written to Christian. I know nobody in here had no fault. Ain't nobody in here had no sin. But Jesus said, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us and give us 2020 vision. I'm just saying, just saying. How many can understand that? Uh -huh. See, the Lord just began to drop certain things in my spirit. And, 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 and so I wrote it when I wrote it. It said, this is an, uh, and shall be an incredible, awesome year for us as a church body. But also for all who perfectly joins themselves and tap into the same mind that we might possess the same judgment. Can't have the same judgment if you don't have the same mind. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you tap into that, how I many you know the anointing flows? Amen. Amen. And, and it's not prejudice. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's some equality about it. Amen. Proverbs 29, 18. See, I don't have time to go through all these different translations, but it says it so many different ways. And I mean, it's such a blessing. Where there's no vision, the people perish. I told you there's, there's perishable visions. There's perishable people. Yeah. See, and, and I'm, I'm going to just jump in and do something here because it says where there's no vision, it didn't say the vision perish for real. It said the people do. See, so if the people perish, how many realize it's because they lost vision? See, the vision remains the same because it's eternal. Amen. It's God's vision. Yeah. It'll always be the same. Yeah. But if you don't have it, you can perish. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you don't understand that, but that's where it's telling us that you have to have a present day revelation of what truth looks like. Yeah. Oftentimes, we want to do it theologically or historically, but it can't just stay there. We have to bring it into the now. It has to come into contemporary settings. See, it's got to look like us. It's got to walk like us. It's got to talk like us. Amen. See, because cause I, don't, I, I, I don't believe that everybody was talking uh, 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 all the thieves and dust and dust. And see, and that's another thing that get me when I hear folks talking about the thieves, the dusters, and the thousands. We don't talk like that. To me, you're just trying to validate something that you, but praise the Lord. <laughs> now that's just me. See, I'm just one of them kind, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, you don't have to come to me with that. You don't have to come, well, I'm gonna leave that alone. But you don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. How I many you know the word of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy? See, you gotta understand, give the word of the Lord. That's the spirit of prophecy. Yes. <laughs> I'm just saying. But anyway, you're not going to twist me up with foolery. I said your normalcy might become your foolery. And we got to get away from it. We want accuracy. I do. And I'm going to roll like that. Till Jesus comes. Till Jesus come. That's just me. Amen. Can't do it no other way. 
So, so we, 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 we step into this 2020 thing. And one of the keys is, see, see, Dr. Monroe said sight is common, vision is rare. How I many know selfishness causes us to lose him? See, you saw how Joseph and Mary lost him. See, selfishness causes us to lose him. And we miss Christ because we get into ourselves. We get into a form. We get into a fashion. We get into what people have been doing for so many years. And it don't necessarily mean that it's right. The Bible said there's a form of godliness. But you're denying the real power. See, the power done transformed us. The power done healed. The power done delivered. I mean, no, the Lord is steady delivering, is steady healing. He's steady, steady, steady making us free. You're seeing people getting saved all the time. You got to open your eyes to see. It's happening. <laughs> see, see, you might not see it as, you know, uh, on, the, on the scale that you may have seen it at other times at different places, but it's happening every day. But will you put the work in? See, it, it's not about what we do in church. Church don't start till we leave. So the dimension that we've stepped into wasn't anticipated or expected, but it's ordained by God. And when God woke us up on the first, I mean, no, we transitioned to a new level of vision. Connectivity in our body and our community changed, shifted, whether you shifted with it or not. This thing shifted, sure did. See, you gotta understand, Jeremiah 29 lives for I know the thoughts. God's not doing what he's doing in your life without thought, without purpose. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, King James, says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil that you can have. See, I expect my end to be good. I expect my end. Hey, Amen, I got expectations. Anybody got expectations? I said anybody got expectations? Yeah, yeah. So we get to the place where we understand God sets us in the body as it pleases him. See, oftentimes, and I've shared it before, but people get it twisted. You shouldn't be comfortable. I said you shouldn't be comfortable. You should be uncomfortable. Because you're not in the place that you selected. You're in the place that God set you. If you're really in the right place. And it ought to aggravate and agitate you at times. Because God's growing us up. And if you're in a comfort zone, you'll never grow up. You'll never grow up. If you like everything about everything and everybody that you run, that you, that's you around and every place and all that they're doing. And if you like it all, you're in the wrong place. I don't like everything y'all do. I know you don't, Bishop. But I still love you. I still love you. <laughs> I, still, I, still, I still love you. I still, <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> and I know y'all don't like everything I do. But that's cool. I'm all right with that. Amen. I ain't mad at you. Because you shouldn't. Because you don't see what I see. Amen. So you don't get it twisted. It's about you and him. Listen to me. Listen, 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 Linda. I mean, listen, listen. I don't know. That was just a pop up. That was just a pop up. I don't know know where that even came from. (laughs) Praise the Lord. But anyway. See, even in the natural, okay, we talked about the, the, when Nimrod then was building the Tower of Babel. How many know the Lord said one thing that really, really blessed me? He said, behold, the people is one. And they have all one. How many know they're doing dirt? They wasn't even doing what they're supposed to be doing, but they're doing dirt, trying to find another way to heaven. So they're out of line. But he said, they all have one language. 
And this they began to do and nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Because they're all speaking the same language and they're in unity. He said nothing that they imagine to do can be denied them. He said, I'm a, I, I, it has to be honored because of the unity and the language and the oneness that they're operating in. <laughs> it don't matter whether you like it or not. All you got to do is keep on operating. Amen. Philippians 2.2. 2. Says, fulfill your joy, fulfill ye my joy. How many know God's joy is full when we are, it says, and I just put that in there, when we're full, when we're, when, when we're in the place that uh, God purposed for us to be, his joy is full, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one mind. How many know God's joy is full? Yeah. Ephesians 4, 16 says, from whom the whole body is fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. So you do have a supply that we need in the body and we need you to release it. We need you to stop setting on it. We need you to stop talking about it. We need you to, to release it. I was listening at the I was listening to TBN the other day and, and, and um, I forgot who it was that was on there. But he said, and it was about the it was at the same time that Kirk Cousin was on there, I think, but but they were talking about how that the one message that the I, yeah, it was Joe Brown. He said the one message that always stuck with him was uh, somebody had preached the message and they said that he in the message he said you have to get out of the huddle and run the play. I want that to marinate. See, stop huddling. It's time to run the play. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it's time to run the play. I said it's time to run the play. Who heard what I, I said? It's time to run the play. Get out of the huddle. Always talking about what you're going to do. Let's do it. Run the play. Take the shot. I like that, man. That's it, Bishop. Amen. Yes, sir. Run the play, man. Run the Forsaken not the assembling of ourselves together. Forsaken not the assembling, not the gathering. Right. So you're running the play when you assemble, not when you gather. See, we don't need church goers, bench warmers. Amen. We got to get out here on the field. We got to run this play. Amen. Exhorting one another. Learn how to exhort each other. Encourage one another. How many know sometimes that's the best gift that you could ever give? It's just a word of encouragement. When a person is feeling down, when a first person is discouraged, just give a word of encouragement. Amen. It says so much the more as you see the day approaching. Things are time sensitive. Amen. I don't want to get into time sensitive today, but it's really it's important that you understand. Okay, because God positioned us for growth, he's shifting us, taking us out of our feelings. So I'm not, well, I'm not going to say that, but I was going to say that I'm just going to, I'm just going to speak the word only. Not going to be always mindful of how you feel about what I said. See, I done, got, I done got old now. I done got older. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ever notice how when people get older, they just say stuff? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Before they kind of sugarcoated it and, you know, made it, you know, easy to take and stuff. But when, when they get up, they just tell you the truth. So that's where I'm at now, y'all. I'm just going to tell y'all the truth. Y'all do what y'all want to. Y'all do what y'all want to do with it. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you the truth and y'all work with it. Amen? Is that all right? <laughs> just tell you the truth. And we just work. See, you got to get out of the immature. You got to get out of your feelings. Get out of your feelings. Get in the faith. Amen? Because we can do this thing. Can't nobody stop it. It's too many of us to be stopped. I said it's too many of us to be stopped. Amen. So we got to learn that God is, is focusing us. He's, he's focusing us. I, I'm going to have to go get me another eye, sir. I got one on this side. I'm going to get another one because I'm getting cataracts. How many know the cataract didn't just jump up there? Right, right. See, they, they told me years ago that they were developing. They said that one time you, you might have to get, get an operation or whatever. Now, I don't have to. I can see, you know, real good. But I, I, I'm, I'm getting little, little feathers and stuff. Yeah. 
And so I know it's time to go in. I ain't gonna wait until it ain't crawling all over my eye and I can't hardly see before I go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No see, that's just me. That's just me. I ain't gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? Feather popped up, I'm coming. Right. Amen. Time for me to go. Huh? See, too many of us, we, we so afraid of doctors or knives or whatever, or surgery or whatever. How I many know God gave them wisdom that you can go and get done what you need to get done so that you can get your 2020 vision back? I mean to have 2020 visions in the natural and the spiritual. Oh, come on, give God some praise. Amen. I'm excited about what God's doing. Yeah. So he's teaching us selflessness and how to walk by faith and not by sight and how to walk by faith and not by fun. We got to stop walking by fun. You know, when there's a fun event, I'll show up. No, we need to walk by faith. When there's a word event, we need to show up. Who's hearing what I'm saying? Okay, I got to hurry. Y'all messing me up. So there's Psalm 133, and you know it's only three verses in there, but you need to, we, we got to get a hold to it. Uh-huh. Behold. See, so it starts off. Open your eyes. Huh? How good. How pleasant it is. For brethren. So you got to get it. To do what? Dwell. See, it didn't just say for, for brethren to gather. It says for brethren to dwell. Unify, yes. fortify itself, yes. huh? Stand erect, yes. huh? When we, uh, uh, Pastor Laura was, was was speaking over at the at at, at the evening of uh, uh, the, our New Year's Eve. See, we're talking about being in formation. Yes, she did. Yes. 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 I'm gonna throw it out there. Some of y'all. How many seen three hundred? Anybody see three hundred? And y'all saw when they told the man. They told the cripple, he said, he could, he could hold his shield, he could stick his, his spear, he could do all that. Huh? But he knew that when he got in formation, right. when the earls would come and the, and the people that...